Hey, welcome to the prayer porch. It's good to have you here today. Um, it's wonderful and it's beautiful out here and just feeling the warmth up on my shoulders and it's just, God is good. God is good and he is faithful. And Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Thank you that you bring me here on this prayer porch so that I can just read and study and plant your word in my heart. Because that's what I do. This is where I come. This is where I, I make these videos. I do these videos a lot for myself because I can talk out loud and process the scriptures that God has put on my heart. And I just, I just kind of talk to God about them. And there are times that it, while I'm talking, it just, I see a different perspective. I'll go ahead, thank you. I didn't see it that way. It helps me. Well, by the, over a little over a year ago, I was just led to publish it. Long story. And I, yeah, so I started putting out the prayer porch. So I send this out to you so that you can process with me. I encourage you not just to take my word for it. The only way you can't get nourishment from what I eat, you have to eat it yourself. So I encourage you to grab your word, grab your Bible, join me, and we'll just have our own Bible study right here on the porch. If there's something that's said that, that enlightens you, that inspires you, that God puts on your heart and leads in another way, Give me a message about it. I'd love to share that with you. I'd love to share what we have together. If you like it, like it. Like it and share because that just helps me get it to more people. And uh, and a lot of people have asked about it, asked about getting it out. So I encourage you to do that. I also want to take a minute before I get started. And I want to thank one of my messengers that have reached back is from Uganda and Africa. And I want you to know I'm so glad that you and your group have joined us. And I just want to thank you for coming onto the prayer porch. And uh, it's a delight to have you. And I hope that we, you can return and keep returning. And thank you for your wonderful messages. I want to look today at the scripture that I looked at yesterday because I told you it was one of my favorite stories as a kid. But not only is it one of my favorite stories when I was a child, but it's a story that has so many lessons in one story. And it's in 2 Kings chapter 6. And it's a story of Elisha and Elisha's servant. And it starts the in chapter 6, verse, we're going to start at verse 8. It says, when the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces with such a, in such and such a place. But immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go to that place, for the Armenians are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place and ind indicated by the man of God. Time and time again, and that's what I want you to hear. Time and time again, Elisha warned the king so that he would be on alert there. And the king of Aram became so very upset over this. He called for his officers, to, he called his officers together and demanded, which one of you is my traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel of all my plans? But, but it, it, it's not us, my lord the king, one of the officers said. It's Elisha, the prophet in Israel. He tells the king of Israel even the words that you speak when you're in your bedroom. Go and find out where he is, the king commands, so that I can send my troops and seize him. The report came back. Elisha's at Dothan. So one of the kings, king of Aram, sent a man with a great army and many chariots and many, now get that, many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, chariots everywhere. <gasps> well, sir, what should we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. <laughs> Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than there is on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, Oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up and he saw the hillside around Elisha, he was filled with horses and chariots of fire. As the Armenian army advanced toward him, Elisha prayed, Lord, Please make him make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness, and Elisha had as just as Elisha had asked. Then Elisha went out and told them, "You have come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. Follow me, and I will take you to the man you are looking for." So he led them to the city of Samaria. As soon as they had entered Samaria, Elisha prayed, "Okay, Lord, 
Now open their eyes and let them see. So the Lord opened their eyes and they discovered that they were in the middle of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elisha, Ha, ah, my father, should I kill them? Yes, should I kill them? And it says it twice. He was adamant. Yes, you brought them to me. Should I kill them? Can I kill them now? <laughs> of course not, Elisha replied. Do we kill prisoners of war? Instead, give them food and drink and send them home to their master. So the king made a great feast for them, and then he sent them home to their master. But after that, the Armenian riders stayed away from the land of Israel. I want you to think on that. It really struck me yesterday. I was talking about, yesterday we talked about, this reminded me, Lord, what I, or Lori, what eyes are you seeing through? Are you seeing through God's eyes or are you seeing through the, are you seeing the limitations that the enemy wants you to see? Or are you seeing the possibilities and potential of what God has for you? What are you speaking into your life? Are you speaking, oh, I'm old or this is a day and I've got energy to take a hold of it and go because this is the day the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. What kind of things do we speak to ourselves or we accept because we want to see the limitations instead of the opportunities. So as I was reading that yesterday, I got to the end. And as I was reading that story, I saw another method, another lesson in this that God was ministering to my heart. Because I realized, do you know what? God doesn't always take care of situations exactly as I see that they should be taken care of. Did you notice here it said, that the Armenian was a continue the Armenian army was a continual pestering of Israel, trying to overtake them. It said he had over and over and over again pursued Israel. So over and over and over again, the king of Israel had to say, "Okay, where do we go now to avoid this army? Who is this monkey on my back? They want to attack me. They want to attack us. They want to destroy Israel." So. I, so this is not a one-time attempt. How many times do we have things that keep at us and at us and at us? It may be a person, it may be thing, it may be something, it may be a habit, it may be something that you just can't get that grasp on and it keeps seeming to defeat you. You know, I just, I try to not let self-esteem to attack me, but why does it always become my enemy? I really try to, not to um, this habit or that habit or try not to get angry. I'm trying to get a hold on my anger. I'm trying to get a hold of negative thinking. I'm trying to get a hold of overeating. I'm trying to get a hold of alcoholism. I'm trying to get a hold of this addiction or that addiction. God, I want you to fix, can you just fix it this way? Can you just do it this way? And we wait and we want God, we almost tell God how to do it. God, she's driving me nuts. He's driving me nuts. This is, I, they're so mean to me. They're so abusive to me. Take care of them. Show them who you are and just get rid of them. So God delivers them right into Israel's hands. And I caught it when I was reading out loud yesterday and I had read the story and I was wanting to focus on how the way that they perceive things. But I caught what the king of Israel says. It makes a point in the scripture not to say it once, but twice. Can I kill him? Can I kill him? God, you brought him right here to me. Let's just get rid of him. Let's just get rid of it. Lord, it's so much easier if you just get rid of this. I want you to take care of this for me, and this is how I want it done. I want, I, I wish this, or I wish that. Lord, I, we, want, we want to tell God how to fix it. We want to tell God how it should be. But Elisha shouts back and says just the opposite. The king's ready to kill him. And Elisha sends back and says, feed them a feast. Throw them a party. Put hot coals on your enemy's mouth. It says, and there's a proverb that says, Treating your enemies with kindness is like putting hot coals on their tongues. 
He says, I don't want you at all. Even though they've come to kill you, I don't want you to bother them. I want you instead to feed them and send them home. Feed my enemy? Elisha, don't you see? They're the ones that's been trying to pursue. Uh -uh -uh. God says, feed them. So the king listens to the man of God and he feeds his enemy. And that enemy returns and it says, they totally left Israel alone. They no longer pursued Israel. Now, does this mean that we're supposed to feed all of our enemies? No, what I'm saying is we need to listen to God. When I read that, God said to me, Lori, the things that you are frustrated with, the things that you let frustrate, eat at you, the things that you feel like are constantly holding you back, and you're asking me to fix it for you. Don't come to me to fix it and tell me how to fix it. Come to me and say, Lord, give me ears to hear what you want me to do in this situation. Lord, this person's really, really making my life miserable. How do you want me to fix this situation? Had the king of Israel fixed it, there would be a lot of people died, a lot of bloodshed that day, a lot of people whose lives were lost on both sides. But when God fixed it, people left full and left in harmony. I think of the old adage when kids are fighting and they, they used to say, put them on either side of a window and let them wash the window across from their brother or sister that they are fighting with. And soon you'll have them laughing at each other. Make, hold, make them hold hands. Make them be together. Let them sit together. Let them realize, you know what? Uh -uh, God's got this. I don't need to be mad at you. What a waste of time. I don't need to fight with these negative feelings. What a waste of time. God, I give it to you. Show me what you want. What is it that I, you need me to do to put this behind me? And it may be. There are times in the scripture he just speaks it and they're gone. There are times he's commanded them to pick five rocks up and put them in a sling and take them down. But in this case, he said, feed them and send them home. So it's obvious that God has different ways to deal with things which is why it's important that we're aligned with him so that we are in tune and we don't try to fix it our way. But we say, God, I want to fix it your way. I want to give this to you so that you in turn can make it a blessing for all that's involved. I'm sure there are a lot of stories around that every one of those soldiers had a story. Maybe there was a family there that needed their father at home. Maybe God, maybe there was somebody else praying and saying, God, please bring my daddy home from war. And God heard that faithful prayer. I don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us that. But we need to keep in mind that God is a bigger picture. And in that bigger picture, things happen in a way that we may not expect. I can think over and over and over again in my life where things weren't fixed the way I expected, but when I look back, I can see God's hand in it. I can tell you when I had my miscarriages, I was like, God, why can't you fix this? Why can't you fix my womb? I can tell you there were times when I was single and I thought, Lord, why does everybody else have somebody and not me? What's the matter with me? Why can't you just bring somebody? He said, in my time. In my time. And had I just grabbed the hold of what God had brought by, I would have been so unhappy. I waited for him to bring me who he had in his time. I waited for him to give me my children in his time. And in that, it's made such a difference 
with so many people's lives that I'm able to share with and understand pain that other people, that when, when other people gone through that. And I know one day I'll hold my children. I know one day I'll be able to run with them in heaven. There are times I don't get how God's going to fix it. And there's times when people say, well, what's God going to I have to say, I don't know, but I know he will. I just need to do what he tells me to do. I need to pray and say, Lord, not only give me eyes to see it from your perspective, Give me ears like Elisha to hear your voice and know what you want me to do. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me that I may know and hear your voice. And Lord, let me not decide the punishment of my enemies whether that be a person or something I struggle with. But let me let them go and put them in your hands and accept what you choose to do with it. Thank you, Lord, for your patience with me. I don't know about you, but that just gave me a lot to think about. So I share it with you. Go back and read. It's in 2 Kings chapter 6. And I, I actually kept reading. I couldn't stop. Time and time again, if you keep reading the stories after that, this same point is reiterated. Where God says, I am going to fix this different than what you expect. The next story talks about expecting how can you make uh, bread, the food and the famine and everything has come upon the world, upon Israel. And Elijah says, nah, tomorrow you'll be able to get food easy. And it, it just one story after another. God has his own way. When you follow him, you'll walk in the blessing of his way. Something to think about. Give me your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking. Like, share, and I'll see you tomorrow on the course.